discussion uh, with one of the members of the channel and they were asking me about the reason why we have financial stability in the world even though there are wars going on with uh, Ukraine and Russia and uh, Israel and the Middle East why do we have economic stability across the, the board is anything supposed to get horrible and the reason is is no it's not uh, oil production in the United States has actually increased and we're increasing it more and we're offsetting any of the turmoil that you're getting with uh, the Ukraine war uh, with the Russian oil and the gas being taken off the market uh, we're basically making money off of their declines so instead of uh, importing um, we're importing to Europe you know and we're offsetting their 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 gas we're making money off of them so thanks Russia for uh, making us money um, we just replaced you is basically what happened and uh, it's uh, because of that we have stability across the board because of the energy crisis normally you would expect there to be a far bigger impact but there's not um, with all that's going on in the world and there's a lot of chaos but uh, we are the financial stabil uh, stabilizers of the marketplace and uh, you can thank America for that and it's we're increasing our oil production we're also switching technology uh, more and more electric cars are appearing on the roads I'm seeing more and more Tesla's where I live uh, and I'm seeing other types of electric cars from um, I've seen a lot of uh, the Mustangs, which is an SUV now, which is weird because the Mustang's not an SUV. <laughs> but I'm seeing a lot of those. I'm seeing Kias. I'm seeing um, Cadillacs that are all electric. So slowly but surely over time, we're switching to electric as well. Um, so that's going to also diminish the oil, but it's stabilizing. And that's one of the main reasons why we're not suffering from all the turmoil and uh, the unfortunate wars that are taking place. Uh, capitalism doesn't care about wars. Communists care about wars because they try to expand their empire through distraction uh, and while they their people suffer. And Russia's suffering. They're, they're freezing right now because they don't have the people or the money to put into that. They put it into the war. Kind of sad. Um, but that's the, the main premise of what's going on right now. Anyway, enjoy this video, and here we go. Sorry, I've had family over the whole week, and, uh, ugh. So, now I can actually work. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, uh, here we are with Bitcoin, and you can see it started its pullback, but we're still at none at numbers that really matter. Uh, the first pattern here has completed. All right, so let's mark this down here. This is what you would expect to have happen off of this one right here. Do, 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 do. Now, my guess is we'll probably go down further lower. Um, this is the real area that I'm interested in. It's going to return here because that's like the pivot point. Now, I could take off 5% and look for a bounce to get back up to here and above. Uh, or even the highs because that's what happens. It's the bigger picture type of view and That's what I would look to have happen is for us to go down maybe bounce all the way back up here retest the highs and then Break down back here or we can just keep going down from here um, so that's one of the possibilities there is a high likelihood after you make a new high above the 61.8 with this pattern, the bigger pattern that I've been talking about where we went from here and up to here, 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 and we then broke out all the way up to where we are and then pulled back. There's a very good chance that we'll get down to these levels somewhere in here and then bounce right back to the highs. And nobody's going to be expecting it right now. Everybody's doom and gloom. It's the end of the world. And you're some seeing all kinds of really stupid things about Bitcoin and, and how it's, you know, 
Jamie Dimon said something that's going to zero or the you know, people believe all this crap. So it's kind of entertaining, but it does cause volatility. Now keep your head on the, the big picture, which I showed you before and of numbers. And I'm going to be looking to cover, I'm going to trade the ranges the best I can. Um, because cumulatively over time they, they add up and I've always done this and I've done rather well if you know my history if you've been around any of the I've been here for about what six years that's pretty amazing but yeah um, so you know I, I don't listen to the noise of that the yapping people who talk on YouTube and then the websites like tone bays and everybody else I, I don't care what they say I'm looking at the charts that's the only thing that really matters and that's one of the reasons for my success is that I pay attention to the chart, not to bobbleheads uh, that just like making noise so they can get subscribers. But I mean, I guess that's marketing. That's not my thing. Um, but we went up to these levels up here and we're pulling back. This is the first level. You know, this is your logical pattern that you have right here. A little butterfly that occurred. Doop, 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 five. And it went to a confluence zone. This is a bigger confluence zone. So this made sense. This went up to here and then pulls back hard. Sellers naturally will develop to here until you get down to at the very least here, but more than likely somewhere back to even this range down here would make sense. And I could leg out. Um, there's a good percentage chance that we'll pull back and then pull all the way back up here um, to retest. Uh, so that is a high possibility. I might trade that. I don't know yet. I'm not in a rush uh, to do anything. So we'll see. Um, but this is your, here, let's put this up here. It makes more sense now. This is your big picture. Um, could we go down to here and even maybe a little bit push under here on some wild you know move and then go keep going higher and higher and higher that's a possibility too there's statistics for that um, but I have to trade what happens most often not what I think or want remember that that's why you won't see me freaking out and every move and it doesn't matter what stock or what asset I'm gonna apply the same logic that I have always used and um, it, it works and uh, there's no feeling or excitement or dread <laughs> uh, I don't freak out every time the chart moves I don't really care this is one of the advantages of trading spot and one of the advantages of going with what the market does most of the time and, and not caring um, now I'm gonna keep this video kind of short but it's going to be all about Bitcoin and Ethereum and XRP. Those are the three. And um, I am going to add uh, Cardano to this one that I was asked. You know, and I listened to listen to my peeps out there. I, I was asked. A Cardano is kind of a big one. It's in the top ten. Um, so I'll give it its due and put that in this video. Um, the rest of them that you guys sent me in, in the chat room. I'm going to do that in a separate video, and I'll dedicate that um, towards the subscribers, uh, towards uh, them wanting to look at the different issues, and so we'll we'll dive, I'll deep dive into all of those, and um, uh, yeah, so this one's just going to be on the the big guys, and then uh, I'll show you what I think of the, the all the ones that you requested in the other video. Now, you see what's going on with here. We're at this level right here. This is kind of short-term support, so we'll see what happens here. Now, if I pull in, and let's go to a 45-minute. See how it bounces right off of this area right here? That is logical support. All right, that level right there, that spike down, 
this is where you would expect it to. Now it's kind of did this three times, so it's likely going to break down under here. And the only thing that you have down there is this 38K area down here. And again, I've got shorts from up here, here. I have nothing to do. I know exactly what I'm looking for. This is mainly what I'm looking for down here. And statistically over time, it's the likelihood is we're going to go even down to here. And the best way to look at that is with the fibs. Um, here's your 61.8. Let's see if I can pull that up, get it away from a 45, let's see what a four hour. Here's your 61.8, now I have to even go smaller, oh no, my charts are not allowing me to do that. Oh, anyway, I can just tell you what they are. 61.8 was this up here. This is your 50%. And this is your 38.2% over here. And I would expect it to go down to here, um, ultimately. Um, and then we can look at the visuals where they crisscross and they kind of crisscross right down here. So this, they crisscross right on the 38% level. If you see the move up here, here, and here, you can see how it um, built it before going up to where we are here. It built in these levels and so forth. So fibs do have a, um, uh, they're useful. They're, they, their natural price dynamics come through on there. But what happens most of the time when you run up to a new high and you retrace 61.8% is that you pull back to 38% before you get continuation upward. So looking out into the future, and now we're in this time block. Um, if you remember this one, this is the one I wasn't expecting us to go up. I was expecting us to go down to these levels down here. I was hoping um, that we would because I wanted to buy even more. I, I bought a ridiculous amount. <laughs> So I didn't really have to do that. I, I knew we were going to bounce more than likely. I could hedge. I, I had great trades, and I, I'm not going to get super greedy. But I was hoping that we would go back down to these levels and under before we made the bigger move in January on reversed around the 8th to 10th, I guess was the, the date for there. So, so far, this has worked out. So what do we do within this period of time till um, June 10th to 12th, I believe it is? There's that two-day window. This one was 8th to 10th. And if you remember uh, in videos that I had from the past that this pops up, I showed this chart before. I don't know if I had this one, uh, the data for that one, because I was doing it before this point. I think it's somewhere over here. And I came up with this one and this one. And then this one recently, the past few months, data-wise, um, started to appear uh, in the numbers. And remember, I do modeling, I do statistics. And what that means is I have a number bias for when things turn um, in a time variable. I use time as one of my, uh, one of the things that I use for uh, the charts, not just patterns. I mean, there are so many variables that you can go off of. And also reading the tape, uh, the volume, the tape, and how the move, how it moves, it tells a story. That's why it's not easy. There's no fixed linear ideology. Uh, you can't just use uh, harmonics and fibs, and you can't just use patterns and visuals. There's no, they, it all works together. Um, it would be like trying to uh, grow plants with just sun and water and not paying attention to weather. <laughs> so you, you understand um, uh, my thinking on that? Uh, there are countless number of variables that uh, work within, you know, with each other, and you have to keep uh, uh, an understanding of that. So let's say that we get within this this range right here. I don't think we'll go all the way down to there, but I think there's a good chance we can get to the mid 25k area at the the most on the downside. I don't see it going below that. Um, we did pull back. 
after this period of time. We spiked up real quick, but there's nothing up here in that 61.8 other than the, uh, uh, the ability for people to sell up there. And people could say whatever they want. I wasn't uh, doing the short hedges for fun. It wasn't entertainment. Uh, I was looking. I'm looking for prices to, to retrace. And that's so far what they're doing. Um, now, I showed you the pattern here. Let's go to Ethereum. What do I expect for Ethereum? Um, right now, it's still overbought. It needs, it's, it's lacking. It always lags um, Bitcoin. So I would expect you get a, a spike down to here. Um, so, and again, if you remember back in the day when I was buying this, buy, buy, buy is over here. Um, even there, uh, I traded this many times, uh, back down to here, then, then traded it, the buys back up again. Uh, we got up to here. This is, see that red right there and this yellow right here. That was the prior zone. Now we're going to pull back here. Here's the only thing you have is 2300 from 2700. So we went up to the 2700 level. That was the, the gap. These are the two. There's nothing between these. So I'm looking to get back under 2300, uh, probably down to the low 2100, somewhere in there. Um, I would expect it to fall quickly. It has this ability to go over and do fake outs, um, acts real slow, and then all of a sudden, whoosh. <laughs> Just like when it was over here and then spikes all the way up to 2700. Nobody was expecting that. But I was I was looking for 2700 and it went up there. Um, so good point to, of a short hedge. I don't have as much of a short hedge on it as I do on Bitcoin, but I have enough. I'm not worried about it. Now XRP. XRP is an interesting one because it has this flush spike right here. And this is kind of an magnet as to one of the reasons why it wasn't elevating up to higher numbers, which it should have, because I would expect numbers to get all the way back up to the, the mid 80s at some point. But this is not an interesting chart. It's not been an interesting chart for a while. Um, it will likely become an interesting chart later on down the line, months on down. I have nothing really to do with this. If you remember, um, when it went up to these levels up here, I got the free ride and I did really well. And I, I traded it a few times all the way back down to the 40 cent range. I was looking for it to uh, trade back down to here and it did. And it created this wonderful pattern. So now I've got symmetry of which I could trade longer term on. And I would look for it maybe to go all the way back down to here um, uh, with Bitcoin. It's, it's not gonna be an uh, incredible range, because it had its news, if you remember. It won its case against the SEC, and that was the main trade um, that I traded off of here. I got the, the double up. I put it like 20% of my total um, holdings, my total portfolio, which is big for a number three. It's not Ethereum or Bitcoin, which I trust in, uh, but it's XRP, and I put that a big amount of that in there. and. I got the move off them winning their case. That was uh, a, a double. So I had an extra 20% of total holdings. Um, got a free ride. And if you know what a free ride is, even better than a free ride. Um, but had the free ride. So that's free money. I can't lose on this. Um, so I don't really mind it moving, oscillating in between these numbers. Um, traded the range perfectly went down to the mid 40s after the news came out and um, it, you know it, it made its machinations of, of movement that it should have done it does it did that and now Bitcoin is in that same position it's making its machinations of movement and uh, pulling back after the news of the ETF approval right so there's a great deal of legitimacy to Bitcoin in the marketplace that's going to be positive gravitas but that's for the future the next several months between these periods of time until June we've got a long period of time of which we could do all kinds of crazy stuff 
could get big moves down, big moves up. <laughs> you know, I'm, hold on to your seats is all I can say because um, – and there's going to be a lot of bullshit posted online. A lot of these guys, I, I look at them in amazement. They don't know anything about charts, but, man, they really love to talk headlines about what Bitcoin is going to do, <laughs> which is kind of entertaining, but it doesn't mean anything. In the end, the, the chart is what matters, the tape the chart, what people are really doing. And the big money is going to be buying. There's no doubt about that they're putting money into this. And when that liquidity dries up, it's going to be probably slow and boring upward movement. Um, so that is a, a big possibility in, in the future. Um, and where that's going to happen from? Um, well, it's got to get down to here first. It's got to get that to the previous 38%. Um, I'm not going to really do anything with this keeping my hedge. Remember, with everything that I bought when it was, it did its move all the way doubling up more than once from here to here, I'm holding on to a lot of profits. Um, so me, the short hedge is just a way to lock them in. And then if we get the movement down here, I can let them, let them go and get fully back into it. Um, but I'm not in a rush. Uh, I enjoy my the profits, you know. Hey, and um, so that's Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now let's go to I, I even I put in XRP here, uh, as you see right there, and um, not expecting much from here. You know, I, probably lower numbers though. for us to even get back to the forty cent range would not be unusual. Now um, let's go to. ADA or Cardano, not my favorite. You guys know that I don't really like this. I don't even put up the technicals on this because it's never been an interest to me. But this number, the 24.86.2486 was the key number on it. And where do you go from there? Well, let's see. Let's look at the pattern. Wow, you have a lot of upside possibilities with this one. This has a big range. Um, so I think it could level out here in around uh, 3.9 and under here. And then at some point get a movement it has to get all the way back to 1.24. Um, this would be an area of interest. I would hold this area right here of interest. But I'll put that as a yellow. It's not that interesting. The area up here is more interesting. So I would look for numbers to get all the way back to the 170s range. This is what I would be looking for right in here on Cardano. This is where the rubber meets the road. And this whole area right there. Correct on that. A little higher. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Right in that area right there. So the upper 180 to 90 cent range would make the most sense over time. Going forward, and I think Cardano will get there. I think this is very likely. Uh, statistically, I'd have to go over and run the, the stats on it and do some. Um, more in-depth analysis and I have to go over and read the volume and the prints and all of that and that takes a while so uh, my job is not easy when I'm actually doing in-depth uh, there's a lot that you don't see and that you can't see on the chart that I look at um, from time to uh, volume to the way the movement on the different exchanges works uh, and it, the different prints on the different exchanges I'm always looking at that and it's kind of like um, the same thing with stocks, except for sometimes on stocks I don't even pay any attention because uh, I don't have time. I, I make uh, uh, you know just straight out gambles on some of them. Like uh, uh, our last one, the, a few percentages I put on what was that uh, canoe. Um, so if they work out or not, that's up to the the market. I do not go crazy. But some of them I actually really do deep dive into the volume. And when it was Bitcoin or Ethereum, uh, I 
that you'll see me do that far more often because more money is riding on it. But anyway, um, or even XRP, I did it with XRP as well. And I, if you remember from past videos, all the number of times I traded it and had big trades off of it. I remember this one down here, the X to A trade. Oh my God, that was fantastic. You know, got that big move all the way up here. The shorts all the way back down. Oh my gosh. I mean, the ranges on XRP over time have just been amazing. But anyway, um, those are your majors. So we got Bitcoin, we got Ethereum, we got XRP, and I even added in um, Cardano. I hope you understand what I put on there and the numbers I'm looking for. Again, the 125 area up here, that's your visual points. And then your midpoint up here in the 190 to 180 range uh, is what you were looking for. And on a pullback, you look it for it to go under this 39 cent, uh, cent range. Uh, that's the only place I would be looking to get into it. Um, it could go lower, it could even make a big move down, but I would be a buyer and fade it and look for the moves later on in the future. So there you go. That's it for this video. Um, I will go and work right now. I'm going to do two videos today since I was stopped. Um, uh, so look forward to the next one coming. I'm going to work on that right now. Enjoy this one. And I'll see you in the next one.